The RT used inside of a bridge procedure is very long-winded. So there's a lot more involved and more complex type of communication as opposed to ADAR, where the, the RT is, is so much shorter. So what is the future of this approach procedural? Is there any future in it? You know, what's happened to it? Many stations disposed of this discipline in the operational environment once new technology moved in and radar had come the talk of the town. ATC started to rely more on technology and what radar, the benefits of, of using radar. So they're able to handle a bigger traffic load. They're able to ensure safety by visual reference on radar. The RT, radio telephony, is basically short and sweet to the point. And there's less pressure on the ATC from uh, a gar- from a guaranteed perspective. In other words, I can see my aircraft. I can see their height. The height that the pilot is telling me is the actual height that they're at because I can see the visual reference on the radar through the through the equipment readout and so on. The disadvantage with radar in terms of an operational organization is that this is a, a cost to to company. So they have to obviously ensure the maintenance of the equipment, training on the on the display. There's an upkeep of the display and the associated equipment. There's an upgrade of the equipment. Ultimately, this is pointing down to us. And as you know, we, we're still in the pandemic right now. COVID hasn't gone away. And this means for the aviation sector that ATC is also scaling back because there's no requirement for as many controllers in the center anymore to manage the volume of traffic which was really being managed during pre-COVID. So, but there are certain states that are re-looking at the way traffic is managed in terms of technology. Scaling back means that they can now look at maybe bringing back TMA management approach procedural And now, instead of big costs on bulky equipment, now all we need is a serviceable radio, a serviceable VDF, and uh, lots of paper, because we we need these flight progress strips, uh, which the ATC is going to record information on. Certain um, African states approach procedural is still the way uh, traffic is managed. Again, because of our costs, uh, the, the upkeep, the equipment, you need somebody that is qualified as a technician to be able to service this equipment. Remember, the air traffic controller is an operator. He's not a technician. There has to be collaboration. So what are the chances of approach procedural being part of next generation? So next generation is is the advanced technology in, in air traffic control, the incorporation of things such as drones coming into the, the century and, and changing the way air traffic control looks at, at traffic management itself. This is something that is obviously a, a consideration, but personally, I don't think a approach procedural will replace a radar uh, radar is a very user-friendly and very reliable form of separation management. Are uh, all these negatives, as you said uh, earlier now, with regards to the costs and and, and the upkeep and, and the training and, and replacing and so on, but you can't put a cost on a person's life. And air traffic control is relying on their resources and tools available to to them to ensure that uh, traffic are maintained in a safe manner. So the ATC ideally just wants to plug in. So what we mean by that is put their headset into the jack so that they can go live, control their traffic, and when they completed controlling, so their shift has ended, they unplug. So I think if you had to put a, a vote to air traffic control and say, what would you like? Which way do you want to go? I think the consensus would be that there'd be more votes for, for radar than for approach procedure. But ultimately, approach procedure works. Discipline that is needs to be very well managed at 
is very reliable and it re requires that the person who's going to manage it has a good understanding of traffic in what we would call a 3D pattern. So what we mean by that is an, a person who's able to see the traffic by looking at their strips, the flight progress strips, and putting this picture of the traffic in their mind. And they can see the aircraft where they are by looking at their progress board. That might sound a whole lot of gibberish to a person who's visiting this, this group, but that is fundamentally what, what we're looking at. So this would mean that that person that's going to come back into approach procedure needs to have all of their senses about them. They really need to be thinking what's going on with the traffic. They cannot, just like a radar controller, they cannot afford any uh, disruption or such as a, a cell phone. We're not allowed to have cell phones on position, but they, they can't afford anything to distract them while they're on position and, and manage the aircraft. So it'd be interesting to hear if you have any thoughts on, on approach procedure. Maybe you want to find out more about this discipline, um, then you're welcome to send me an email at dylan at talkingradio.co.za. I'll gladly give you any information that you want to know about. Very fascinating subject. And with approach procedural, it's something that once you've, you've worked it, you're not going to forget about how, how to apply it at all. It's always something that's going to be there with you. So I call it an art. That's the way I see it. This is an art. This is something that you, as you work more in it, you, you become more uh, fair with the procedures and how to apply it. So it comes naturally to you in your air traffic management station that has radar that might have a radar failure the ATC can always go back to approach procedural so you can see it's something that's definitely there to stay for for air traffic control thanks very much for listening to my podcast and I hope to see you on the next one goodbye